Today we're talking about how and when to commit tracks within Pro Tools, so if you want to learn more about this topic, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash the like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when the video is coming out. So without further ado, today we are talking about how and when to commit tracks within Pro Tools. So obviously I'm gonna show you the process of how you commit tracks, but really the bread and butter of this video is the theory behind why and when you would want to commit tracks. So we're gonna go over all of that in this video. But before we get to that, make sure you guys check out audiosourcer.com and check out all the different services that have the offer. So I have audio mixing, I have audio mastering, I have audio editing, I have also training, so I do one-on-one -on -one remote teaching. And there's also a blog on there where you guys can go check out some of my articles where I give a lot of information away that I don't have on the YouTube channel and you can subscribe to all of that for free. So it's definitely worth checking out. So now that, that is all out of the way, let's get into today's topic and let's talk about how and why you'd want to commit tracks within Pro Tools. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools, and we are first talking about the three instances when you would want to commit tracks within Pro Tools, or any DAW for that matter. So the first instance is pretty obvious, and that is when you are working with virtual instrument tracks. So we often spend a lot of time getting these settings just right in our virtual instrument plugins, for example, Anna 2 right here. So what if you spent all this time getting your settings right in this and then you lost them and you can't recreate your sound? Wouldn't that be pretty awful? So that could actually happen. So say that I finish this project and then maybe 10 years down the road, I want to reopen it and do a remaster on the project. There's a possibility that the plugin might not be supported anymore or you know, maybe there's been new updates to it and you know, just the settings and stuff that I have in here have just been kind of wiped out, all right? That is very possible and could happen. So the best thing to do is to just simply, when you are getting towards the end of a project, just commit your virtual instrument tracks, just commit them all, and then you'll be safe. There'll be audio tracks and you'll have nothing to worry about, okay? So that is the first instance why and when you would want to commit tracks. Now, the second instance is when you are working with something like Melodyne. So with Melodyne, if you're not familiar with it, it allows you to modify vocal pitch, timing, vibrato, fluctuation, all kinds of different things. And it takes a while to do all that. So as you can see all these blobs here, this is the vocal performance here. So the last thing you want to happen is to lose all this data. And I have seen that happen when you go between different versions of Melodyne. So if you have a project that was modified with like Melodyne 4, and then you open it and you happen to only have Melodyne 5. I have seen issues with that. So we wanna make sure that we are committing tracks that have Melodyne or other vocal editing tools that work like this, okay? So that is instance number two. So the third and final instance is when you have a very specific effect that plays a large role in how the track is supposed to sound. So for example here, we have the Verse Harm track, and on this track here, I'm using the Waves Lo-Fi Space plugin, and I'm using it for an effect. And it has a very specific effect sound on it that I like. And if I wanted to send this off to a mix engineer and he didn't have this plugin, then we'd be stuck. So, I wouldn't expect him to recreate the sound with different plugins. It'd be my job to just commit this track so that he has this specific sound that I'm going for. But not just for that, I also would be you know, running into the same scenarios that I told you about with the other two um, instances. This plugin could you know, not be available in the future or it could be you know, completely different down the road. I want to make sure that I have the sound that I have now 10 years down the road. And the best way to achieve that is to simply just commit this track and I have the sound that I want, okay? So those are the three instances when you would want to commit tracks within Pro Tools or any DAW. All 
All right, so how do you actually commit tracks within Pro Tools? Well, it's actually very easy, but there are some things that you need to keep in mind. So for example here, if I wanted to commit this intro pad track here that has the Anna 2 on it, so this is a virtual instrument track, I have to keep in mind that I actually have the SATS and CS on here. So when you commit a track, any thing that you have on the inserts here is going to be printed to the track. It's going to be committed. So we don't really want things like EQ and compression and stuff like that to be committed because those are more like mixing tools and we're going to be using those later on in the process. Now, usually when we are, you know, working on a project, we're recording it, we you know we're just kind of working on it through the phases. We are doing some mixing as we go. So we are gonna likely have some, you know, mixing tools and effects in here. So what we need to actually do with those, if we wanna keep them, is we need to create a placeholder track. So this is a stereo virtual instrument track here. So what we'd want to do is we can just make a stereo audio track here. So let me do that. And I can actually move the SATS and CS plugin here to there as a placeholder. So what I'll do is after we commit this intro pad track, I'll just move it back so I can keep all my settings. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So let me click on the intro pad track here and then we'll right click and then we'll go down to commit right here. And this is going to open up the commit tracks window, okay? So in here, you got a couple settings. So commit selected tracks. So this is what you want because we have it selected. It's highlighted here. Now, typically, I don't really select consolidate clips, but you can. Uh, we'll do it for this you know, scenario here because this is good if you have a bunch of cut up audio tracks. Um, I would recommend it in that scenario. I do not render automation, so I always leave these unchecked. I don't usually want to do that. Um, I do copy my sends and group assignments. And this is a good setting here, insert after last selected track. So it's just gonna put it in right after here. Now this is important here, source tracks, hide and make active. So what's gonna happen is, it's actually going to just hide this actual track here. So you're not gonna lose the original track. It's actually just gonna go over to this little tracks tab where my mouse is moving here and it's gonna be hidden, okay? So this is great, this is non-destructive, okay? So you can always reference back to your original track, okay? Um, and then I always leave offline checked because it goes faster and that's typically how you do your processing. You only need to have offline unchecked if you're working with outboard gear, okay? That's uh, for another conversation. All right, so then I'm just gonna hit okay and it's gonna do its processing here, and it's usually pretty fast, so we'll just give it a few seconds here, and we'll be right back after it's done. All right, so there you have it there. We now have the intro pad track now committed down to an audio track there. You now don't have to worry about losing your sound. All right, so it's as simple as that. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and you should now know how and when to commit tracks within Pro Tools. So if you did end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe so I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know new videos coming out. And if you guys enjoyed this content, definitely check out my video on Pro Tools playlist to learn more about them. And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.